Welcome to our YouTube channel where we share our building wisdom or lack thereof with you. On today's episode, we're gonna be solving the mysteries of the speed square. emphasize how important of a tool this is to have in your tool belt. Uh, so important that I actually have a backup, uh, and it's not a great one, but it's a spare, just in case something happens. Uh, so whether you're the cut man, whether you're the layout man, whether you're the guy installing, you need to check whether stuff is square uh, to your plates, you got to have one of these in your belts. And if you don't, you're almost worthless. In fact, if you only had these four items in your tool belt, you could do most carpentry jobs, no problem. Hammer, pencil, tape measure, speed square, well, and that. Uh, see, next in order, I would go utility knife, uh, chalk line is a must, uh, hot sauce, and that kind too. Okay, so let's start with the things that people do know about a speed square most commonly. Okay, number one is you can hook it on a board like that, pull it tight, and you can make a perpendicular line to the board, and you can cut it. That's number one. Uh, the second thing that most people already know is that it has a tape measure on it. So say I wanted to mark a stud layout, I would put that on that mark and mark an inch and a half and draw another line and there's a stud layout. Boom. Most people know that. It's also no accident that a speed square measures about seven inches across the top. In fact, a hair more about seven and an eighth. That's because two by fours are three and a half inches wide. And across two of them is seven inches if they're spaced out a little bit like they are here, seven and an eighth. So when you're doing your layout, say you're doing 16 on the center, we're going to mark three quarters either side of 16 inch increments. That's a stud. And I want to lay this out across both plates. And actually, you want to make sure the ends of your plates are flush like that before you do that. And so we'll strike our lines for our layout. And it will go all the way across nice and easy with our seven inch speed square. Okay, so let's dive into number one of lesser known things that this speed square will do. Uh, number one on that list would be the scribe feature on a speed square. Um, now, these little notches right here are indicator marks for eighth inches on your square tape measure. So we're going to pick the one that's an inch and a half, which would be right there. And if you hold your square tight and pull it like that, you will get a line that is exactly an inch and a half from this edge of the board. So these things also make awesome throwing stars. If you think you're a ninja, get started with one of these. Don't mess with a man with a speed square. Okay, next we're gonna look at measuring degrees with your speed square. This has a pivot point, which is this corner right here. It usually has a little a little notch in it. A little see that little notch missing? That's your that's your pivot point. So we're gonna hook that on the edge of the board and we will spin the square out. And if you want to pick a degree, we're going to pick 40 degrees right there. See that 40 degrees? You'll line it up with this edge of the board, same edge as your pivot point is hooked on. And you can now draw a line. And that's a 40 degree line in relation to this edge of the board. Oh, now let's get into some rafter cuts with this speed square. Using this pivot point the same as we did before, let's turn this out here to where it says six on the common. I'm going to say common top cuts. Uh, and this would be the, say, the top end of a rafter where it butts into the girder. Um, and so this would be a 6 on 12 pitch. So I'm going to mark that. And that would be cut right here. And that would make the top edge of your rafter. That's your common top cuts. So now we're going to pretend that uh, this rafter needs to be cut on a 10-12. So we're going to do the same thing. Pivot till we see 10 on your common right here and we're gonna draw the line, keeping this pivot tight. And that is a 10-12 top cut on your common scale. And of course, if you want a 45 degree angle or a 12-12 pitch would be the same thing. You just hook this thing flat and mark the long edge and that's a 45 degree angle. And that's a 10-12. Now we're going to look at this hip valley top cut scale right here. Now this is for the top end of a hip rafter. And so what we're doing right now would be this top cut where it butts into whatever it butts into. Okay, so for the hip valley cuts, it works much in the same way. You're going to rotate on this pivot point. And if we have a 10-12 common rafter, we're going to go to the 10-12 on the hip valley. And that's going to make the top cut for our hip valley rafter. Scribe that line and of course you just have to extend it on out to the end of the board this works well for that as well and now you can cut that and that's the right angle for your 
top cut on your hip valley. This dotted line right here is used to do your seat cuts, which also called a bird mouth. Uh, and that's where your rafter sits on top of a wall plate. Uh, and so let's do a mock up here. Let's pretend the uh, rafter tail is this end of the board. And uh, I know the measurement to the outside of the wall plate on the bottom of this rafter. So I'm gonna mark that point and say this is a 712 pitch rafter. So we're gonna mark on seven and I've drawn a line here. And it can be long, it doesn't matter. Um, and that's the vertical line of this bird's mouth when we're setting the rafter. Now we're gonna use this seat cut feature. We're going to line up this dotted line with the line we just made. You can see how that lines up and make a line back across here. Now that's a bird's mouth for a 712 pitch on a three and a half inch wall. And actually your wall plate is going to be right there. So another way I commonly use my speed square is to flush boards on top or bottom. And that would be using it in this manner to make sure I'm going to, if I'm going to nail two boards together, that they're flush and not slightly offset like that. And bump till it's tight, nail it. Speed square board. You don't have to draw a line. Just give yourself a nice straight edge. good. Your square to run the base of your saw on it. Make sure your fingers are out the way, guys. Don't hold your square like this. Hold it way out here. And that's actually the better place to hold it anyway. Do not hold it there. Right here. Fingers way away. Sometimes you have to remember the measurements of a lot of boards and then walk to a cut station and cut them. That's when the speed square comes into play. If I need to cut a board 101 and a half, I just write it on here. I need one 102 and an eighth. I write it on here. And when you're done with them, little lick and they're gone ready to go again so that's a really uncommon use but i do that all the time so i don't forget stuff between where i'm working and the cut station okay so i know that my speed square is 3 16ths of an inch thick if i'm setting windows or doing something where i know i need a 3 16th shim i also use it for that that's great for that And if you guys are real smart, you'll ignore everything I just said and look at the booklet that comes with your speed square. But that requires reading and watching videos is way more fun.